Hi everyone. With the upcoming Magic 2015 release just around the corner, um, I want to talk a bit about um, what we look forward to next weekend at the pre-release. Uh, we've got a pre-release event being run at Heroes Beacon. Um, for those of you participating, it's uh, running Friday. We have a, a midnight launch. I guess it's 12.01 on Saturday. Uh, we also have an event running at 9 o'clock on uh, Saturday morning and uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday and another event running on Sunday at uh, noon. So we can look forward to is uh, you'll get to select a color, you'll get uh, depending on what color you've chosen a different promo card, uh, you'll get a seated booster pack and uh, five M15 booster packs. You'll also get a spin down life counter and uh, an oversized Garuk Planeswalker, uh, which is a challenge card that you can play against, and uh, some wolf tokens that go along with the Planeswalker card. Um, I did want to talk briefly about um, what cards I'm looking forward to, at least in this upcoming set, and what we can look forward to seeing this weekend. Um, things that have gotten me rather excited about the, uh, the core set, things I'm hoping get you rather interested in the core set as well. So with the uh, the 2015 core set, we are going to see, first and foremost, um, some new Planeswalkers, which are always interesting to see. Um, we are going to see um, the return of uh, Liliana Vess. We're also going to see uh, the 2014 Chandra Pyromancer reprinted. Um, for new Planeswalkers, we're going to see a new Ajani, right on the heels of his uh, Jirion to Nyx uh, counterpart. We're going to see a new Jace a new Nisa, and a new Garuk. Um, with the Garuk now being uh, a dual color black-red um, Planeswalker to reflect his cursed status, and Nisa taking over as the green Planeswalker for the set. So they're really interesting cards. Uh, out of the bunch of them, I'm most interested in uh, Nisa just because I think, first of all, she's got two plus one abilities that are both rather good, uh, one of which can be used to generate mana. And uh, her minus seven allows you to basically pull all of your basic land out of your library, put them directly into play as four four elemental creatures with trample um, that also still count as land. So you'll have all the mana you'll ever need, thin your deck out, and uh, hopefully trounce your opponent in short order, especially in a, a limited release or sorry, a limited event like a sealed event. Uh, also of interest, we have these uh, these new avatar creatures, um, six of them, one for each color and an artifact one. Uh, each one an, ar uh, an avatar are the different uh, planes. So there's Soul of New Phyrexia, Soul of Theros, Soul of Ravnica, Soul of Innistrad, Soul of Chandelar, and Soul of Zendikar. Uh, six, six creatures, um, each with a different ability that typically reflects their color, um, and an additional activated ability as well. It's typically quite potent. All interesting cards. The most interesting of the bunch, I think, is the Soul of New Phyrexia, which is uh, a 6-6 six, six trample for 6, um, but for 5 mana, its ability allows you to give the uh, permits you control indestructible until end of turn, um, which can make things a real headache for your opponent. Also interesting is there's a, a number of new slivers, including the uh, mythic sliver Hive Lord. Uh, this guy gives all your slivers indestructible which is neat to see. Downside is the other slivers are all uncommons, so you're not likely going to be able to build a sliver deck out of this uh, sealed event. Um, but you may be able to, to put a few slivers together and, uh, and work some magic with those. Um, again, here are the five new slivers. Most interesting of the bunch I find is the constricting sliver. Um, which allows you to, uh, when the creature er when a sliver enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature on opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. So it's a great way to, uh, near the end of the game, get rid of some of your opponent's bigger creatures that are causing a headache. Um, so it's, it's not a bad card. It's likely going to be fairly useful if you're playing white, even if you aren't playing slivers. Um, and soul artifact is kind of neat for two mana. Uh, enchant artifact. The artifact is a 5-5 a five five creature in addition to its other types. Um, so quite neat. Um, 
Other cards that are quite interesting are the, the Paragons, um, one of each color, and, and they give the other creatures of that color plus one, plus one. So Paragon, the New Dawns, gives other white creatures you control plus one, plus one. They also have an activated ability, each of them, um, that uh, will grant an ability to another creature. So uh, Paragon, New Dawns for white tap, another target white creature you control gains vigilance until end of turn. Uh, for blue, gives them flying. Um, for black, death touch, red, um, haste. And for green, it's a trample. So pretty much, you know, archetypes for those colors. Um, there's also the ones that gain uh, plus one, plus one. Um, if you have land of one of the allied colors. So Dauntless River Marshal, for example. It's a white creature, but if you have an island, uh, it gets plus one, plus one. Uh, the Kerr Chieftain's another one. Um, it's red, but if you control forest, it gets plus one, plus one. They all have activated abilities in that allied color as well, which is rather neat. Um, in terms of the promo cards you're going to see, so for white, if you're playing white, you are going to get a uh, Foil Resolute Angel with alternate art. Um, she's rather neat for seven mana. 4-4 four, four Flyer, when she comes in the battlefield, she'll return your life total to 20 if it's less than 20. So if you're on the ropes, um, she can bring you back in the game in short order. Um, Siege Dragons, a 5-5 five, five Flyer for 7 mana, um, destroys all of your opponent's walls. And if, if it attacks and your opponent has no walls, then all of their creatures without flying will be taking 2 damage. Um, so it's going to be great late game to sort of tidy things up a bit. The black promo card is going to be the Indulgent Tormentor, which I think is a really nice card for 5 mana. You get a 5-3 flyer in and of itself, not bad. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card unless target opponent sacrifices a creature or pays 3 life. Uh, so again, lots of benefits to go around there. So it's going to be a nice promo card to play. Blue gets the short end of the stick, as far as I'm concerned. You get the Mercurial Pretender for 5 mana. Um, it's basically a clone that can only clone your creatures, which is meh. Um, it also gets the ability for 2 colorless and 2 blue, return this creature to its owner's hand, um, which may be a good way to pull it out if it's in a tight situation um, and return it to your hand safely. But I mean, if you've got nothing good to clone on the battlefield, or maybe nothing at all on the battlefield, um, then you're going to be in a really rough spot to make use of it. It's not quite the bomb that the other colors received. Uh, greens isn't very well uh, off either. Uh, Fido Titan for uh, 6 mana, you get a 7-2. Great power, and not much for toughness. When Fido Titan dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of his or her next upkeep. So, sure, it comes back to life, but it'll come back into play tapped. Um, leaving basically the screen door open for your opponents to charge through. So it's really not that great, but yeah, it, it could still win you some games, um, and it's probably better than nothing. There are some other great cards in this set as well to look forward to. Waste Knot looks interesting, probably not as much as Limited. Uh, Genesis Hydra, though, will probably be quite a nice uh, card to play in Limited. Uh, other things to keep an eye out are the new lands, uh, and old lands, I guess. Um, there is a, a Sliver Hive, uh, which can be used to cast, to basically tap for one colorless mana, or tap for one mana of any color, uh, as long as that mana is used to cast a Sliver. So if you're playing a Sliver deck, I mean, that's going to be the way to go. Again, limited, eh. Um, Evolving Wilds. Uh, is making a comeback. It's a great card. Nice fetch land. Some of the old pain lands are coming back as well, which surprised me. And it's the uh, opposing colored ones too. So Battlefield Forge, uh, Caves of Koilos, Lenore Wastes, Yavamaya Coast, Shivan Reef, those are all returning. Um, so some really interesting cards. Um, again, the promo cards are what most people are going to be focusing on. Uh, Blue kind of did get the short on the stick, I think. Still, it should make for a fun sealed event. I hope everyone has a great time. I hope to see as many people as possible. And I hope people give uh, M15 a good chance because it looks like a really worthwhile set. Um, so that's it for me, and we'll see you around.